Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning into our weekly podcast. Our prayer is that this message would speak life into your world and that God would use it to encourage you in your journey of faith. If you'd like to find out more about our church or visit one of our services, just head on over to dreamlifechurch.com for more info. Enjoy the message. Hey, today we're starting a brand new series called Same, Same, But Different. And um, you might have heard this before. Uh, it, it is a popular saying in Thailand. I think it kind of originated in Thailand, potentially. And um, th- the big idea is here that, that, that Thai people will use this, especially in their sales pitches, um, to try to communicate to, um, to foreigners, like you know, people that don't really speak the language. And I think... I think what I've what I've engaged from it is that they sort of think this same same is, is kind of the same as saying similar. And so I, I don't know why they don't just say similar. I don't know why somebody hasn't just told them that. But I guess it's way more fun to say same, same, but different than to say, oh, yeah, similar. It's kind of, that's boring. They've got a more colorful way of going about it. And uh, it's actually so popular that you can, you can pick up the T-shirt um, in many places in Bangkok, like almost in every market that you go to and those t-shirt shops you'll see you'll see these everywhere you know they'll, they'll use it it's kind of like when you when you when you're trying to buy that Rolex watch from the from that market night market bazaar and you're like oh bro this is awesome is, it, is this a real Rolex you know and they're like oh yeah yeah same same but different <laughs> same same but different so this is kind of where it comes from and yeah I know that right now you're probably thinking like well what what the heck has this got to do with me and, and what has this got this trivia got to do with this message or a series or, or whatever, and don't worry, I'm going to get there, okay? So just, just hang on a second. But if you have a look around, and you can do this if you like, uh, for a second, you, you'll, you'll be reminded, you'll be reminded that we're all very much the same, right? I mean, we've all got arms and legs, and we, we, we've all got like a face, and um, hopefully... Uh, we, we, we all like breathe air and we all eat food and, and we, we're very much the same, right? Would anyone agree that you know, we're human beings? Yeah, there's, there's some certain similarities, but I know this is really basic kind of primary school, um, you know, biology kind of teaching and stuff. <laughs> but at the same time, we're, we're also incredibly different, right? So we're, we're, we're kind of same, same, but different. And we all come in different shapes and sizes. We have different shades of skin color. Um, there's only one skin color, there's just different shades of skin, right? There's just one color called skin, but there's just different shades of it. We all have a different shade, and, and, and we all have different hair color and eye color. And, you know, I know this is real basic for you, but we're just kind of, we're going to set it up to go somewhere today. Well, not only do we have appearance differences, but we have personality differences. And, and this is kind of where it gets a little more fun, because we get to tease people and, you know, in, in good fun and in love, of course, but... It's, it's good when we can provide humor for each other based on our, you know, disposition and who we are. And, and you know, you got like the sanguines who are super optimistic and active and social. And you got the cholerics who are short-tempered, and they're, they're, but they are fast at what they do, but they can also be irritable. Sorry to all the cholerics out there. Uh, melancholics who are like analytical and wise and, and quiet. And phlegmatics who are just super relaxed and peaceful and um, just kind of bring everyone together and just say, let's all just chill out. Um, that's me, if you hadn't, hadn't realized. And, and then there's those who just don't really fit into this um, personality box at all. And you just can't really figure out what they are. you just kind of like, man, I don't understand this person at all. Like, they're a mystery. They're an enigma. Have you, have you ever met someone like that? <laughs> you like, can't figure them out. And not only do we have differences in personalities, but we have differences in preferences and taste and what we're into and what we like. You know, how we do things like, you know, when, when, I, when I get the ironing board out, like I always point the pointy end of the ironing board to the left, right? Because then my t-shirts can kind of come up over it and I can get the iron with my right hand and we're all good, we're all sweet. But for some reason, when my wife approaches setting up the ironing board, she, she, she has no like kind of pre-planned method. She has no like concept of how she thinks it would be best. She just pops it open however it comes out and, and I'll come in and <laughs> often the, 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 uh, the pointy bit's going to the right and I, I just can't deal with it. Like I can't, I can't iron a shirt like that. I just can't can't figure it out and so 
We all have differences. I mean, have you ever seen those people who, who, who are they're like a rare species who, who believe in reverse parking their car in busy shopping centers, right? <laughs> and, and for some reason, they think it's important um, and then it's cool to hold up traffic like round the corner to get like the perfect park. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And we're all different, right? We're very different in the way that we approach things <laughs> in our lives. No offense to any reverse parkers. Um, it's all good. We're just different, yeah? If you put the ironing board one way or the other, it's cool. God loves you. Um, just, <laughs> just don't expect me to do ironing when it's that way, all right? Um, <laughs> we're just so different. And I think it's fair to say that this saying, same, same, but different, is actually quite applicable to our humanity. Would you agree? I think, it's, I think it's actually quite fitting that we're actually same, same, but different. And so we want to dive into this because I don't think it's an accident that we're all different. I really don't believe it's accidental. I don't believe it's just a mathematical kind of anomaly that we're all so different. I actually think it's by design and it's by God's intention that we're all so different. God made us same, same, but different. And, and this is so clear because you, you can't find one person who, who has exactly the same face, identity on the planet. Even identical twins have slight differences, different fingerprints. Every person has a different fingerprint, a, a unique voice identity. Can you imagine that every single person's voice has a different readout when you put it into waveform? that's so unique that it can be used to identify who you are. Isn't that incredible? We're, we're so different, but we're different by design. We're, we're not different because of random selection, evolution, you know, whatever, that kind of stuff that people might say. I believe, and the Bible teaches us that we're different by God's design. That God has made us uniquely in His image to be same, same, but uniquely different. And why is this? Well, I just believe God wanted it that way, and, and he's a creator who, who never runs out of original works of art. Would you believe that today? That God never runs out of original works of art, so he doesn't have to go back and repeat something because he just can always come up with something fresh. Isn't that incredible? I think God deserves like a hand of appreciation. How, how boring would it be if we had clones in the world? It, it would be pretty, pretty boring. But, you know, with all of these differences and all this uniqueness and all of this individuality, the crazy thing is that God calls us and designs us for relationship. And He actually calls us together to bring our differences together and unite for the same purpose and the same cause. And He designs us, even in our differences, to actually need each other. You know, God, God has designed you with deficit. You need people in your life. You, you can't be self-sufficient. It's just not human. You actually need other people, and those people that you need are different from you. And, and it's kind of this catch-22, because we need each other, but we also can frustrate each other. We, we can be a blessing to each other in relationship, or we can be people's worst nightmare in relationship. But, but in spite of all our differences, God's kind of set it up this way, and He's called us to have relationships and relationships are honestly one of the most important things in life. In fact, I think we could go as far to say that life is really made up of relationships. That the quality of relationships we have really do determine the quality of life that we live. You can live in, you know, poverty and have rich relationships and feel like a rich, fulfilled person. You know, you see sometimes people in third world and places, developing world where you visit and, 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 and always the Westerner comes away saying, you know what, they don't have much, they don't have everything we have, but they have something that we don't have. They have a richness of relationship and appreciation for one another and for what they do have. And somehow they can be even more happy. <laughs> I think that the person who has great relationships has got, you know, like 90% of the things kind of sorted out already. And, and, and God's called us to relationship. God designed us for relationship. And so in this series, we're going we're gonna to just unpack relationships and try to help us get equipped for them because out of relationship flows life. 
and when their good life is good and when their, when their bad life is a struggle. And so we thought it'd be great to start the year by doing a series that helps empower us to do relationships better. Does that sound like good news to somebody? And we're talking all kinds of relationships. They come in all shapes and sizes and they come in seasons. They come, you know, in all different kind of packages. But at the end of the day, I think relationships, they all have similar principles that help them work. And so today we're just going to start to scratch the ice, tip of the iceberg and, and begin to dig into this idea and that we're all same, same, but different, and yet we're called to relationship. You know, I want to begin today in Psalm 133, and, and we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about unity today. We're going to talk about becoming one. We're going to talk about our diversities, but how those things are actually a key part of relationships. And we're going to start in Psalm 133 and just read through this psalm together and just look at how God celebrates relationship, how God celebrates unity and harmony. And so let's kick it off in verse 1. It says, How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in harmony. How beautiful, how wonderful, how pleasant it is when there is thriving relationships, when people can dwell together, live together in relationship, in harmonious relationship, in life-giving relationship. This is actually beautiful, wonderful, and pleasant to the Lord. God celebrates working, functional, thriving, healthy relationships. God is into that. That's what God wants for your life. Amen? God wants you to be surrounded by incredible relationships that that gift life to you, that bring joy to you. It says in verse 2, For harmony is as precious, or unity is as precious, as the anointing oil. Now we won't go into a study of the anointing oil, but this is something that God commanded people to, to have and to create in the Old Covenant. And, and, and often it's symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The anointing comes upon people to do the work of God and to do supernatural things and to accomplish things that are impossible in the natural. And God anoints people for service. It's, it's a sign of His approval. And the, and the Bible says here, God is saying that, that anointing, that, sorry, that unity and harmony and working relationship is as precious to God as His power and endorsement on somebody's life to do the things that God wants them to do. It's like, it's, it's sometimes, you know what, sometimes, to be honest, in Pentecostal religious circles where it can sometimes be all about the anointing and the power and the giftings and stuff, and sometimes relationships can kind of get pushed to the side, but let me tell you, God's just as in to relationships as He is into the power and the work of the Spirit. It's as precious to Him. And in verse 3, it says, harmony or unity is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. Don't you love that poetic um, imagery right there? I'm sure, Tanya, you could paint that and make that just make sense to us. But uh, Mount Hermon, just picture an epic mountain, maybe, you know, just the rolling hills and, you know, you, you get the idea. But how refreshing, it's as refreshing as the Jew, as the morning Jew. How many people have ever been out like a campsite in, in the bush somewhere and you've got up early and you've gone outside kind of before sunrise and there's that, there's that smell of just kind of dew in the air and it's like, ah, oh, you breathe it in and it's refreshing and it's, it's just that sense of new life and a new day. Well, God's saying here that, that thriving relationships, unity and harmony amongst people is as refreshing as the morning. It's this refreshing thing. It's a breath of fresh air. And so God wants to give that refreshing to you through relationships. Amen? God wants to refresh us. And he talks here about, in the end of the verse, how there, where there's unity, where there's harmony amongst people, there the Lord pronounces his blessing, even life everlasting. So God's pretty into this unifying thing. He's, in, he's into harmony. He's into people dwelling together. He, he commands his blessing on it. God blesses that kind of relationship and really... Those kind of relationships make way for the blessing of God to flow. And I've seen it in my own life. You know, relationships can be an incredible, incredible blessing and we need it. Yeah. Here's what the word unity means. It means the state of forming 
a complete, complex and harmonious whole, especially in an artistic context. What's unity? It's, it's a whole. It's a whole thing that's complicated and intricate and has many moving parts and it can be broken down. There's much diversity. But when it all comes together to make one thing, that's unity. When it's like when everything lines up, when everything comes together, even though the things that are fitting together are so diverse and so different, that is unity. And the dictionary says, especially in an artistic sense. Now, I believe God is an artist. He's a creator. He's an artisan. And God puts his creativity on everything. And, and, you know, a great way to picture unity is to think of a mosaic work of art. Now, we've kind of got a picture of a mosaic here. This is a typical mosaic. And, and, and if you look at all of the different parts, what you'll find is you, you'll actually find diversity rather than uniformity. Are you with me? When you look at a mosaic, you won't find many pieces that are similar size. And even when they are, they're actually different in some way. Same, same, but different. But when, when the artisan brings them all together, are you with me, church? When the artist brings them all together to create unity, you get a whole picture. You, you get something unique and, in, and, and beautiful. And really, this is what unity is. It's a picture of diversity coming together to make something that is new and unique and whole. Relationships are like that. And you know, unity is actually not about uniformity. It's about diversity coming together as one. And God is the master of that. You know, we've got this picture here as our background for the series. Um, and it's taken from Strawberry Fields um, Gardens in New York City. Uh, time, in what is it called? Central Park. And you can show the original. It's actually a memorial to um, John Lennon, you know, the song Imagine. Now, I don't promote John Lennon or his beliefs or anything like that. You know, I, I'm not doing that today. But this song is actually about the diversity of people. And what if everyone could come together? That was what the kind of big idea was. The, imagine if everyone could be in peace and like come together and, and, and be one. And now I, I, that's the heart of God, that God would want to bring people together in Jesus Christ. And so it's kind of cool that we're going to take this mosaic art here and we're going to rebrand it and call it same, same, but different. But it speaks of unity. It's all over it. I mean, it's, it's, got, it's got meaning all through it. So how many people have ever felt the struggle with the fact that you know that, man, relationships are supposed to be a blessing, they're supposed to be life-giving, but yet I'm so different to those people that I find it hard sometimes to gel in. Uh, those people are so different to me that I just sometimes, at the sharp edges, they sometimes rub me up the wrong way. Well, what God is into is not necessarily changing everybody to fit your preference. <laughs> what He's interested in is taking all the individual pieces, some sharp, some smooth, some round, some square, some weird shapes that cannot be described, and bringing it all together to make something that is unique and an expression of his heart. And this is really what the church is all about. The church is called to be unified, to be one, to, to be this group of people that aren't uniform, that aren't trying to be the same. We're not actually even all having the same common interests when it comes to just regular life, but we do come to one common ground is that we put our piece of the puzzle into the hands of the artist whose name is God, whose name is Jesus, and we let him position us and bring us together as this diverse group of people. And this powerful thing can happen called unity. And when it happens, it's precious to God. It's a blessing to people. It's life-giving. And it's actually something that blows people away who don't know Jesus. In fact, Jesus said, by this trait will everyone know that you're my disciples when you have love for one another. In other words, when you're one, when you're unified, when we let God do that in our lives, it's going to be the mark that we are belonging to Jesus. You know, I think that all of us have this, this desire to belong. We have this, we have this God-given need to, to feel like we need to be a part of something. We need to be a part of relationships. We need meaningful relationships in our life. And yet sometimes we can allow the differences that we have 
to keep us apart. But I believe that in a pursuit of unity and healthy, thriving relationships, we shouldn't see our differences as obstacles to unity, but as the very building blocks that we need to get there. This is how God sees it. See, God's like, he's not surprised that you're like completely different to me. And, and that in the natural, potentially, we would go separate ways because we're so different. Or we would gravitate to certain people who might be similar. But God's actually, I, I know you're all different and I'm, I'm, the, I'm the master mosaic artist and I'm going to bring you all together in my plans and my purposes. Is that good news for anybody today? So today, here's two big ideas that I want us to catch. First of all, I want you to catch the idea that you are different not, and it's not a bad thing. It's not something to be ashamed of. You're not supposed to be like anybody else. Be who you are. Celebrate who you are and know that you're designed by God uniquely to be that way. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking about sin and, and you know, negative traits and things that God wants to work on. I'm just talking about personality, makeup, who you are. Stand strong in that in 2019. I want you to just go, yeah, this is who I am. And I'm not, I'm not trying to change for somebody. I don't want to be more like that person. I want to be who God's called me to be. Amen? And I want you to celebrate that. And that's the first thing I want us to take out of this message. But the other thing is, I want, I want all of us to celebrate not only the difference in our own life, but the difference in, the, in other people's lives. Amen? To look around and begin to celebrate diversity. I love that when I look across the congregation, I see people from different generations and, and different um, you know, niches of life and with different skill sets and different journeys and, and, and just everyone is different. Well, we celebrate that. We're not trying to become a group of people that are all the same, but we're actually celebrating the diversity that God's given us. Amen? So that we can unify. Differences are not obstacles. They're building blocks. I think we need to take that home today. They're not obstacles. They're actually building blocks. God fits them together. So let's jump into Ephesians 4 and let's really see where Paul, the writer of Ephesians, really calls us to a life of making room for differences in relationships and really celebrating them and really letting God piece us together in connection the way that he wants to. In verse 2, of Ephesians 4, it says, With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another, especially toward those who may try your patience. Don't you love that the Scriptures are honest? They're like, you know, they're not, they're not naive. They're just like, hey, I know people really tick you off. Paul's like, I know there are people that just drive you crazy and make you want to leave the church and make you think that there's no room for you because if, if that person's there, then how can it work for me? You know, you know we, we, we can get into this kind of place. And if we ask ourselves the question, who normally tries our patience? Well, yeah, often it's people that are so different to us. We don't understand how they can have the ironing board that way or, or whatever. But... I found that people that are similar to me can also try my patience as well. I mean, my son, my, my oldest son is like a splitting image of me, my personality, everything. He just does things the same. And, and often he can frustrate me more than anyone else because I see myself in him. I'm like, you're so the same as me. I, I don't like what I'm seeing. Is this really what I'm like? Don't let me see it. I'd rather be blinded to my own weaknesses. And so really... Like relationships, whether we find a group of people that are into the same stuff, wear the same clothes, go to the same places, like the same movies. To be honest, at the end of the day, no matter what relationship it is, there's going to be moments where people try our patience. So the answer is not to get away from diversity, but actually as we embrace diversity, as Paul's teaching us here, we can find what comes in verse 3. He says, be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bond of peace. Another version says, make every effort. Guard the sweet harmony. How many people have ever heard a sweet harmony in a song before? A sweet harmony. Now, there's a noise ringing in our roof. I think it's like one of those whirly bird things. And uh, it's not a sweet harmony right now. So I apologize. <laughs> if you can hear it, just kind of try to ignore it. But we'll try and get someone onto that. But if you've ever heard harmony before... 
here's the thing, the way to achieve harmony is not by having the same musical instruments play the same notes. It's actually by getting different instruments to play different notes, but when they're brought together, or different voices to sing different notes, but when you bring them together, it makes this thing called harmony. Pretty basic, I know. <laughs> but harmony is beautiful. Harmony is moving. Harmony is attractive. And so the scriptures say in here that if we make room for each other, if we be patient with each other, if we come into relationships with humility, then what we can achieve is harmony. What we can achieve is this sweetness that actually takes a lot of skill. You know, it's not easy to sing harmony on a backup worship team. It's actually really hard. Like it's, it's easy to go for the melody because you've heard it before, but the, the harmony is more subtle. It's kind of more in the background. It sits underneath the melody or comes up next to it, and it's not easy. Let me tell you, unity isn't always easy, but when we achieve it, when we get there, it's always sweet and it's always beautiful and life-giving. And God wants to unite us as a church, but also unite us in relationships that are going to be life-giving. And here's the why Paul gives us in verse 4. He says, Because being one body and one spirit, as you were called into the same glorious hope of divine destiny, for the Lord God is one, and so are we. For we share in one faith and one baptism and one Father, and He is the perfect Father who leads us all and works through us all and lives in us all. Now, I, I kind of highlighted all of the ones and alls in this scripture, that there's a lot of them. And so here's the thing, guys, no matter how different we are, we're all of the one faith. Are you with me? We all have the one Father. We, we, we have one baptism. We have one purpose. And we have one Father who is actually working in us all, with us all, and through us all. And so we better embrace each other because guess what? God is working in the person next to you. God is working through the person behind you. God is working in and around and, and, and with the person on the other side of the auditorium today. God is working through all, so we need to embrace all. Amen? Because that's what God is doing. It's man who segregates. You know, there's a, there's a passage in Corinthians where Paul gets real fired up at the church in Corinth and he's like, how come you guys are bragging that, you know, we're of this leader and we're of that leader? He says, why do you say we're, of, we're on Peter's tribe or we're on Paul's tribe or we're on, you know, Apollos' team? And why do you separate? This is what we do as humans because we see differences and we say, I don't know how to deal with different. And so I'm going to separate myself with people that seem the same. And we hope that that's going to be a good outcome. But actually that leaves us broken and it leaves us missing out on the beauty that's in diversity and the beauty of unity, which is actually different pieces coming together for the same purpose. Are you with me today? And so true unity, which is powerful and beautiful, is not uniformity. Rather, it's unity is diversity working together in harmony. I love that it takes humility to achieve harmony. It takes humility to achieve harmony. Pride, pride really doesn't have a seat at the table when it comes to healthy relationships. Pride destroys, pride breaks down. You know, I looked up the word harmony in the dictionary and it, and it, and it literally mentions the four Gospels. It says an arrangement of the four Gospels, which I thought was cool that the Gospels made it into the dictionary. But, you know, if you have a study Bible, you'll find that like often people will group the Gospels together and they'll say things like they'll do... Writings like it says, like the, the harmony of the gospels, yeah. And the cool thing about the gospels is that, that God chose four different people with four different perspectives and four different personalities and four different views upon Jesus and his life and his death and resurrection to write down the record of all that had happened from four completely different points of view. And yet, in that diversity, there is powerful unity that gives us the gospels. So what that tells me is that God wants to use your differences and your diversity that's different to everybody else to bring an expression of who He is and an expression of His heart and of the gospel that's unique, that's beautiful, that's life-giving. We won't go through all the gospels and who they were and what they did for the sake of time and the writers, but 
it's just amazing to see the harmony that God brings. God chooses people that are radically different to achieve the same purpose. And when we're working with Him, it all comes together. So being different is actually something to celebrate. Amen? It's actually something to celebrate. And I want to encourage us as a church to, 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 to look for the differences in others and thank God for them. To pray for those people and to thank God for the differences. And, and to appreciate the differences that people have. You know, I was really just thinking a lot about, about orchestra this week. I don't really listen to orchestral music that much, but as I thought about unity and diversity and all this, I really just was impressed with the image of orchestra. And I, I, I learned some classical guitar when I was young, but I'm not really you know, an amazing classical musician or anything. But I do understand that when it comes to, when it comes to orchestra, the whole reason it's awesome and powerful and, and grand and, and epic and moving and it can create so much emotion is because of the diversity of instruments that are played that are brought together in unity and harmony. Somebody say harmony. In harmony to make a sound that becomes one sound. And, and, and there is so much diversity. I mean, you've got groups of instruments. You've got your woodwind instruments. But within that, you've got four or five different instruments. And then you've got your brass section. And in there, you've got four or five different brass instruments. And you've got you know, your, your timbrels and you've got, I can't even remember all of them, but you've got strings. And within the strings, you've got multiple different instruments. And it's just this big mashup of diversity. But here's what's cool about an orchestra is that all of those instruments who are incredible talents on their own, who stand alone with years and years of training and, and skill and, and, and knowledge, come and, and sit side by side and they all face and point their attention to a conductor. Are you with me, church? That they all look to this one who holds no instrument, but who ends up turning all of them into his instrument and plays people with a stick and, and, and with his heart and, and with this connection will, will draw out of the musician the very best in their instrument. And I was thinking about this, that, you know, we as people, as Christians, as believers, as the church, we are this orchestra of diversity. But the way that the sound becomes pronounced, the way that the sound becomes clear and a blessing and something that moves people is not when we get into our own space and do our own thing, but it's when we humbly look to the conductor side by side and we let Jesus and His Spirit lead our lives. He turns us into an instrument and He plays our differences for His advantage. Are you with me? He plays on our diversity and He has this one over here and this one here and He brings it all together to create a sound that is heavenly, a harmony that moves people. And so today I want to set the scene by saying, I want you to get off for some people today, I want you to get off the, the guilt trip of feeling, if only I wasn't the way I am. If only I was like them. If only I was better this way. Or if only I had this gift instead of that gift. I want you to get off that treadmill today because God made you different. And I want you to put value on who you are. Amen? Don't worry about what the world says or what, you know, what is on the, the trend. You know, trends change. You know, the people that were like in fashion and trendy at one point in time might be forgotten and in the background at another point in time. Whoever would have thought that people who play video games and forget to brush their teeth and have messy hair and dress really bad would be millionaires on YouTube make, you know, making incredible amounts of money. All right, what about all the people that studied law degrees and finding it hard to get a job? I mean, things change, yeah? But God made you unique. So I want you to believe in that. I want you to celebrate that. And I want you to let God really drop into your heart this great sense of being settled with who you are. Amen? For this year. Well, we don't have time for insecurity. We don't have time to be kind of up and down, feeling good about ourselves, bad about ourselves. Hey, embrace who you are. Let God change you. Let God work on you. But let yourself believe in the value of who you are. 
And then for this unity thing to work, we've got to value every other person who's holding an instrument. We've got to look over this orchestra and say, you know what? I, I might be the drum guy who only gets to put one big bass drum in every now and again when the music's really rising. It's like, boom, yes, got it. Now, now he can chill for like, you know, 20 bars or something. And, or you might be the violin that's just on the go the whole time. But there's no less or greater value in an orchestra because every person has their place. And so let's look around people and value every person for what they bring, for their contribution. And let's bring our contribution to not only the house of God, but to the relationships that God has called us to. I really believe that this year, God wants to widen our relationships. I really feel like God said that to me this week. He said, I want to widen relationships. You know, some of us are really comfortable with the people that God has put in our life and it's awesome. But I feel like this year, God wants you to widen that. Take it out another, another layer in the circle. Amen? Add some diversity to relationships. Create opportunity to be blessed by the differences of others that you might think, man, I don't have a lot in common, but maybe God's going to just widen this year for you. Amen? If we approach relationships with a value on differences, we're going to experience unity that's going to blow us away. It's going to blow you away. I'm telling you, the world can't have this kind of unity. Like people without Christ can't experience this. This is unique for the church. And if we'll lean into this and believe for this and celebrate the God-given differences of people, we're going we're gonna to experience so much joy. Man, it's going to be like that anointing oil just rolling down. It's going to be like that dew coming in the morning. How precious it is. How beautiful and wonderful it is when we dwell together in harmony. Let God make the sound through you and your relationships in 2019. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us on the podcast today. If this message has been a blessing to you and helpful for you, why not consider sharing it with a friend and get the word out. If you're living in the city of Perth, we'd love to see you in one of our services on a Sunday. So why don't you jump on our website, dreamlifechurch.com to find out what's happening. We hope to see you soon. God bless.